Welcome back, Barbarians. We got a special one today, a little bit different. We gotta get the truck ready for the first official public appearance and camping trip we're going on with the truck. So what does that mean? We're not gonna be doing any massive projects. We're gonna be working on cleaning up a few things around the outside, appearance-wise, trying to make a, some, you know, like this little cable hanging out right there. We gotta fix that. We gotta clean up the edge on the door here. We're gonna make this look presentable and as close as possible to a showroom-ready situation here. So that is our task list. Luckily, it's only about 105 degrees out here today. So you know what that means. We're gonna get our sweat on. Let's get to work. Let's make this thing ready. So the Zinzer Perma White is actually interior paint, but it is made to be specifically mold and mildew resistant. The supper hatch will be getting wet from rain occasionally, but it's never going to get direct sunlight, which is pro probably the primary factor in determining what makes an outdoor paint versus an indoor paint. So I figured it's going to be safe to use here on the upper hatch. Plus, I don't have any outdoor paint on hand, and I don't want to run a Home Depot, so... With the upper hatch complete, we can move on to the lower hatch here. We're gonna clean up the outer edge. There's a lot of paint. There's some wrap left over from when I wrapped this thing back in one of my earlier videos. So we're gonna clean up the edge. I wanna get it uniform with the top, paint it nice and black. And this is gonna entail using a lot of paint thinner to get that paint and adhesive off there. And then sanding the whole thing down with some high grade sandpaper to prepare that surface to hold the metal paint. If you don't prepare metal surfaces with some kind of sanding beforehand, that paint's just not gonna stick to it at all. With our patio edge looking nice and clean, we can move up to the actuator housing. We need to get some paint and some trim in here, because right now it's sticking out like a sore thumb. If I'm not mistaken, I've got leftover trim from my bathroom, which also, as you will recall, is basalt colored. It's not the same basalt as the outside, but uh, it's pretty close, close enough that you won't even notice. So we're gonna use this L trim to go around that uh, hole on the outside there. You can actually see in this shot there are some leftover shards of L trim that I had blown apart by trying to cut this a little bit too fast. Trial and error led me to find out that if you just cut really, really slow, then the trim will cut nice and smooth all the way through without blowing up in your face. Remember to wear goggles when you cut this kind of stuff. And we're just attaching this L trim with a little bit of silicone on the inside of that. Okay, we got the housing for the actuator upgraded trim and the paint on the inside so it looks nice. We're going to do one more thing before we move on from the actuator and that is installing a wireless controller. This comes with a remote. It will allow me to control this thing from the outside so I don't have to go inside and then press the button to open the door and then go outside and then pull the lower patio down. I can do everything from the outside. Easy peasy, no problem. This is a pretty simple device. We're going to connect the motor output to these two connectors. We're going to put the input from the power in here and that's gonna should be it
Okay, here we go. It says it has 100 meter range on this. Done. Next up, we gotta install a GFCI outlet in the kitchen. We need somewhere to actually plug in our induction cooktop and anything else we might want to power from the kitchen. So let's get this guy installed. For those who aren't aware, GFCI outlet comes with its own built-in breaker. And the reason that they have breakers on kitchen outlets, I believe it's primarily because you're working it on moisture a lot and a short circuit there will get easily remediated by a breaker in the actual outlet as opposed to a breaker in your garage. The GFCI outlet is also higher amperage than the standard 15 amp outlet, so this runs 20 amps, which allows you to run those higher power appliances like an induction cooktop. With our GFCI outlet installed, we can move on to the one project that I've been holding off for as long as possible because I hate working with wallpaper and that is getting the other half of our living room wall finished. Standard procedure here, you guys are pretty well familiar with this. We're putting the eighth inch plywood on the wall for a nice flat surface. I'm making sure to really sand down the edge where they connect to make sure that they're be perfectly even. I'm even going so far as to use my uh, cargo bars to apply some pressure right on that edge to make sure that they dry nice and even. Any good differentiation in the surface elevation is gonna stand out significantly when you get that wallpaper on there. I'm going the extra mile to make sure this wall is as flat as possible and then that seam where those two pieces of plywood meet is completely invisible once the wallpaper is on. Wallpapering this one wall by itself took about three hours in total. So it's not exactly the easiest job. It's a great use of a time lapse though. I will say so far all the other wallpaper in the truck has held up just fine. No bubbles, no peeling or anything like that. And this truck has been through temperature fluctuations, cold 70 degrees all the way up to 110 degrees every day. It cycles through rapid temperature changes in here. So I would say uh, the wallpaper is holding up quite well. Fingers crossed that continues to be the case into the future. When I sat down to finally edit this video, I realized I only had about eight minutes of good footage from all these little projects that I was doing. So I figured, you know what, what else can I do to add on, get some extra length on the video and make the truck look nice at the same time. And I thought, let's do the kitchen backsplash. I had the tiles already waiting around. I've had these tiles on hand for several months actually. I just never actually got around to installing them. But today is finally the day. We're going with some marble cream colored stone backsplash for our kitchen here. Now, it should be obvious by this point that I'm not exactly an interior designer. So I'm not sure exactly how this is gonna look when contrasting between the concrete countertops. But one thing I did know is that I wanted some natural textures in the truck. This was the best color that I was able to find in the store. And it's gonna really help bring some natural earthy elements into what is otherwise kind of a modern industrial design scheme. I tried to go for some natural textures with the basalt rock, but this is obviously much more three-dimensional since this is actual stone. Some of these stones are polished. Some of these stones are rough cut. I think variation adds a lot of character to this space. Luckily I had a stone cutting grinder wheel on hand from helping out a friend with their countertop projects. And this thing cuts through this stone like butter. So it was very easy for me to trim off the edges to get that flush line for lining up against the countered edges. And from there, it was just a matter of sizing them out and slapping them up on the wall with our contact cement.
One thing I did not film is the installation of these switches. One of these switches will control ventilation in the kitchen area, so I can turn it on when, I when I'm cooking on my induction cooktop, or if I've got something in the oven, all that hot air will be evacuated out through the same ducting that my air conditioner uses. The second switch will control accent lighting for the kitchen only, but it also will power an outlet in the upper cabinets. So there will be an outlet up there in case I want to use that to charge devices or plug something else in up there. Saving the best for last, of course, this tile didn't reach all the way to the wall, so we have to cut a little key. And with a steady hand, I was able to cut the perfect piece on the first try, the first attempt. It was very lucky because this, I just happened to have a spare piece laying around that was gonna fit in there from trimming off one of the other edges. If I didn't make this piece work, I would have had to chop a whole new tile just to get this little key. Final step on this backsplash is to go through with a rag soaked in paint thinner to get all that contact cement off the wall, off my cabinets, and off my countertops, and just generally kind of polish up the wall, get all that dust from cutting off there, and make it look nice. We did it, we got the backsplash in, we got everything painted nice, everything's looking nice and sharp and neat and clean. We got a bed up in there, we got a carpet down here, we've got table and chairs ready to go. Now I do have to admit something to you guys, I did already take it on a trip to the Guadalupe River, so I didn't film anything, but I'm gonna make it up to you. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this thing out for its first ever stealth camping trip. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's find somewhere in the city to take this thing, park it overnight, do a little camp and cook type situation and see if we can't get away with sleeping somewhere rather precarious overnight. I want to hear your ideas in the comments below. Tell me where you think I should take this thing for the first ever stealth camping trip. Let's put this thing to the test. Give me something hard. I don't want a Walmart parking lot. I want something, something interesting. You know, maybe like a police station or something like that. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Drop a comment down below. Let me know where you think I should go and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.